as someone who was a kid when the first Space Jam film came out, I was actually excited when they announced the sequel. And then it got delayed, and then it got delayed, and then delayed, and delayed, and delayed, and so on. So, after so many years, the Looney Tunes are back on the big screen. The film couldn't be that bad, could it? Space Jam, A New Legacy, also known as Space Jam 2, is a 2021 American live-action animated sports comedy film by Warner Brothers. The film follows LeBron James as he is drawn into a Warner Brothers themed virtual multiverse by an artificial intelligence named LG Rhythm. And to get his freedom, he has to win a basketball game. So he recruits the team of the Looney Tunes to try and help him. When the film was released, it did receive generally negative reviews. He criticized so much about the film. But what have I found wrong with it? Well, let's discuss 10 things wrong with Space Jam, a new legacy. Number 10, sequel or remake. So I know that this is technically a sequel, but is it? After watching this film, lots of things don't tally up. There's no mention of the first film, not even in passing. So I get to the conclusion, is this a remake or is it a sequel? I didn't quite fully understand watching this film. There's not even like, there's a couple of passing references, but nothing to specifically say that this is a sequel. In fact, few things actually contradict things. Like the Looney Tune Worlds is deep underground in the first film, and it's in a server in this film. What, they sort of digitized them all? It just didn't really follow on. I didn't get that feeling whether it, which it was. Number nine, soundtrack. One of the things that helped, really helped the first film, was its absolutely awesome soundtrack. They had songs written for this film that were specifically for that film, and it was brilliant. It helped promote the film, because us kids, we were all singing this in the playground at school. Not things that happen nowadays. Now, this film did have a soundtrack, but it wasn't as good as the first one. It's more Here's a, a song we've already done. There wasn't actually songs written for this. There wasn't stars clamoring to write new songs just for this film. And I was kind of disappointed. Now, it's not a deal breaker. A film doesn't have to have a fantastic soundtrack, but it's free publicity at the end of the day. And yeah, this film sort of drops that completely. Number eight, LeBron James. Now, I can get away with saying something like this because I'm not a big YouTuber. Not many people watch my videos and I very much doubt LeBron James is ever gonna watch this and come to my house and beat the living hell out of me. But LeBron James is not an actor. Now, he is arguably the best basketball player ever. He is better than Michael Jordan, in my opinion. And that's his strength. Great acting abilities. Michael Jordan's poor acting in the first film was better than LeBron James's acting in this film. <sighs> I can see why they animated him half, for half this film, to not have him act, but that was a big weakness. It's a weakness you can't have when starring in a multi-million pound big budget film. Sorry, LeBron, please don't hurt me. Number seven, story. One of the great things about the first film is its story. The Looney Tunes need help, so they drag in Michael Jordan. I can get that because ultimately, this is a Looney Tunes film. The second one is not a Looney Tunes film. The Looney Tunes are just there. LeBron James is all about LeBron James. It's all about LeBron James's family. But when you're in a film with Looney Tunes, sorry, no matter what, you want the Looney Tunes. They need to be the utmost smack in the center and then the live action part of it is seconds. But no, I didn't find this story as compelling. Number six, Bugs Bunny. One of the things that made the first one was, although it was different voice actors, those voice actors kept 
everything exactly the same. You could not tell between the Bugs Bunny from Space Jam to Mel Brooks's 60s version of Bugs Bunny. Great. So what the hell was this voice for? Because it did not sound like Bugs Bunny to me and that was really off-putting. I found myself Ugh! during every scene Bugs Bunny was in and I didn't like that. It's not what I want to watch. I want to watch and listen to Bugs Bunny. I don't want to be listening to a really bad impersonation, which what this film actually was. Number five, we. I'm actually on about the games console. Now, before anyone says you spelt it wrong, no, I haven't. Because I'm not on about the Nintendo Wii, which was a fun, enjoyable home entertainment computer games console. I'm on about the Wii handheld thing. Now, this is a handheld device that I don't think exists, because if it did, even Google doesn't know about it, because I looked it up. But what the hell is a Wii? I mean, it looks like it's a knockoff of a Sony PSP, but... No, what the hell was that thing? Could you not ask Sony, could we use your PSP? Could you not ask Nintendo to actually say, can we use the Wii U console? That would have worked. But you've literally got your own one and stuck on the word Wii. What makes it even funnier is in this country, that's another term for going for a number one. But <laughs> why call games console that? I mean, there was a logic behind the Nintendo Wii, but a Wii spelt with a double E? No. Number four, Game of Thrones. One of the criticisms of this film is there's so much product placement from its other IPs. There is Harry Potter. There is The Matrix. Great. There's also Game of Thrones. Not so great. Okay, let me explain. Yes, Game of Thrones is great. Game of Thrones was awesome. I loved it and I stayed up late to make sure I watched every single episode. However, this is a kid's film. You are promoting Game of Thrones in a kid's film. <laughs> the best thing is, you're advertising it really well. Can you imagine your kid saying, oh dad, there's a program called Game of Thrones. It's got flying dragons, can I watch it? Try to explain to your child why you can't watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> Not the best product placement. You can't advertise Game of Thrones in a kid's film. <sighs> no. Number three, cartoon upgrades. The Looney Tunes have their style of animation. We all love it. We've loved it since the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. It's always stayed the same. So uh, during most of this film, it's the same, great. Then the game starts and they, and they all get an animation upgrade. No, 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 no. It just looked wrong. I don't want Bugs Bunny to look realistic. I wanted Bugs Bunny to look like a cartoon. No, it was just awful. It, it was so off-putting, really off-putting. I don't want to see Daffy Duck looking real or Tweety Pie looking ill. No, it just... No, it was just awful. Number two, easy ending. Now, strange enough, this is something the first film had a flaw in, but they managed to hide it quite well. LeBron James has to learn how to have fun, same as Michael Jordan did it. The problem is, it was subtle in the first film, whereas in this film, they have told him that in the first five minutes of the film. He needs to learn to have fun, he needs to learn fun. So, as the big basketball game is about to start, I said to my missus, they're gonna lose until LeBron James learns to have fun. Killed it. There's still 40 minutes of the film left. I don't need to watch the rest of the film because I've already worked out what was going to happen. And this isn't a case of I've actually watched the film two or three times. I worked that out on the first viewing. I don't want to predict the ending. I want to be, oh, that makes sense. Not, well, that's gonna be obvious. It's just wrong. This is not really that good of a film when you're working everything out beforehand. This is such a blatant cash grab stroke. Let's see what we can advertise. Number one, Dumball. One thing 
I loved watching this film was its spin take on the basketball game called Dumball. Great! I want to play it! What? I can't play it? Well, that's disappointing. It was one of the decent things of this film. Come on, Warner Brothers, if you are going to actually give us a game on screen that looks absolutely amazing and fun to play, please give us the game as well. You could have helped yourselves on this film, but where's the game? I actually really want to play it. Now, if I've not been able to find it, but if anyone out there knows that this game does exist, can you put it in the link in the comments below? Because I actually do want to play this game. And if anyone from Warner Brothers actually watches this, can we have this game, please? That game looked fun as hell, and you didn't give it to us. Final thoughts. Watching this film, you can't help compare it to the original one. And when you do that, this film sucks. But when you take the first film out of the equation, this film isn't actually that bad. It's quite funny, especially when you are a juvenile delinquent like myself with a really stupid sense of humor. I get it. We're, here comes Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan, B. Jordan pops in. I was creased up. There were so many humorous things that was just silly. And at the end of the day, that's what this film's trying to be. It's just trying to be silly. It's not as fun as the first film. It's not as engaging as the first what film. And it's not as compelling as the first one. It's just, all this film is, is silly gags with lots of product placement. That's what this film is. So in one aspect, the silly gags work, but it's just let down with a lack of story, with a lack of anything and way too much promotion. During the basketball game, I'm spending more time watching the audience to see what cameos from other Warner Brothers properties I can see. Hell, I'm surprised Warner Brothers didn't say, can we stick Minnie Mouse, Mickey Mouse in as a Easter egg in our film? Because Disney probably would have said yes, just as a joke. But still, too much take away from this film. LeBron James, he, I, was, I will say, as an actor, he's not that good. But as a voice actor, Surprisingly, he was actually really good. That's when the film actually improved when he turns into a cartoon. And then it go, takes a step back when he actually comes as a proper actor again. So LeBron James, you have got a voice actor's job. I was quite impressed with that. But still, it's not, it was missing so much from it. Silly gags will only get you so far in a film. There's nothing really, nothing good from the first film came over. So what am I going to rank this film? Well, ultimately, because of the silly gags, it raises it, but that's the only thing that was actually good for. I'm only going to give this film a 5 out of 10 berries. That's what I think. If you disagree with me, let me know. If you agree with me, let me know. Hell, talk to me. Let me know. <laughs> but that's what I think. What do you think? Did you like this film? Am I being overly harsh on this film? Am I actually being overly nice to this film? Is LeBron James going to actually come and watch this video and come and beat me up? Please, I hope not, because I would not last five seconds with him. And that's being realistic. Anyway, on to next week. This film mentions The Matrix so often. It actually has that Matrix feel to it. So, as The Matrix 4 is coming out during Christmas and I can't do non-Christmas films at Christmas, I'm going to do The Matrix next week. So come back next week, next Sunday and find out what's wrong with the first Matrix film. Take care, bye-bye.